Uh, I'm going to look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter five. So I've got I've got four sons, and they're all different, right? Um, I, I got I got one that will eat anything. I got two that will eat nothing. Um, I got one that that loves sports when I wanted all of them to love sports. One that thinks golf is a sport. <laughs> Um, and, and so they all have different things about them, but they all, they all have one thing in common. I mean, other than the, I mean, there's lots in common, you know, they got, they got mom and dad, they live in the same house, all that kind of stuff. But one thing they all have in common is they enjoy video games. All right. Now I don't play video games much. All right. I got a couple on my phone. Um, you know, so whatever I'm like, let me, let me finish this email. Um, which that's how you do it at work, right? That's how you do it. Okay, teaching you some stuff. <laughs> All right, but I used to love to play video games, right? My my video game ending days on consoles kind of ended with the PlayStation 2, but I loved me some Madden and some NBA, all that kind of stuff. And you know what I loved about it? Is that I could be in the middle of a season because I would save my season. I thought that was the coolest thing. And I would, I would be playing like Madden, which is a football game. If you're like, what is that? Right? And I can make a mistake and I'm about to lose in the fourth quarter and I just press the reset button real quick. <laughs> right? And I can finish the, the season undefeated and win the Super Bowl. And I could be in the Super Bowl and I could be about to lose and I just hit that reset button and I start all over again. All right? So I got to have the perfect season. At least according to that game, right? But here's the thing I got to think about. Every day, God gives me a reset button. And he's pressing it. Not just every day, but constantly. We, get, we go through life, we make mistakes, hit reset. I love God's reset button. And as we, you know, I, I'm not, I used to be really big into making New Year's resolutions, but I always broke them. So now I just resolve not to make any to break. Um, but as we, as we come to, you know, as we're in now a new year, I start to think about God's reset button. How I want to be better or more like Christ each day. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 um, I'm going to start reading in verse 14. There's a lot of stuff that goes on before this, but you know, I've told too long of a story. For the love of Christ compels us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all and therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. So from now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ in this way. We regard him no longer this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him or entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And I love this because it says Christ's love compels us. That word compels can also mean controls us. Listen, you're controlled by something anyway. All of us are, there are things beyond our ability to control and we're controlled by something. So it might as well be the love of Christ that controls us. And I I love it. It's it's used elsewhere. Um, Compels, controls, take captive. And it talks about Christ's love doing that. For Christ's love compels us or controls us. And that can be taken a different, as either Christ's love for us or our love for Christ. You can look at it either way. There's some dispute on Maybe which one is the more accurate? I kind of lean on my love's imperfect, but his love is perfect. So it's his love for for us that compels us. And I love because it says that 
one died for all in behalf of, in place of. He took our place. He took my place. And we therefore regard no one according to the flesh. Although we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. Now, whenever people regard Christ according to the flesh, they can look at him on a, a, as, a, as one that's a, a blasphemer. Or maybe one that's just a good teacher. <clears throat> or maybe just a good dude that lived, right? That's how people, whenever I hear people talk about Jesus, that look at him from a worldly view. Those are some of the things that they used to describe him. But we look at no one with a worldly view. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. I love that. Not just a, a better version of yourself. Not just a, a little better today than you were yesterday. Not, not just, well, you've, you've changed, but new. You are a new creation. That's beautiful to me. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be different than I am. I'm going to be a brand new Daniel. All right? I might look the same. I'm still going to have the bad hair. Right? Still going to not know how to trim my beard correctly. But I'm going to be brand new in Christ. And I love that because if anyone is in Christ and whenever you are in Christ, the old is gone and the new has come. My, my old values, my old priorities, all those old friends that dragged me down, all those old tendencies and addictions that I had, they're gone. And I'm new in Christ. I'm no longer controlled by those things, but I'm controlled by the love of Christ. The new has come and I love you know, if you get into, if you like grammar, I like Greek grammar. I think parsing Greek is actually fun. I'm a nerd. Um, the grammar structure here in the Greek indicates that this is a continual, ongoing condition. That it's a constant reality. It, ongoing. Not just, not just you're, you're made new once, but we are continually made new. Why? Because for our sake, God made him who had no sin become sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. That, you could talk, you could talk for hours and not grasp that. Not fully not fully give a, a thorough description of what that means. Because it's so beautiful. God made him who had no sin, Jesus, become sin. So that we might become righteousness. Not only does he take our sin upon him, but he gives us his righteousness. Because he longs for us to be new. To understand the newness. And I, I struggle with it at times. All right? Because you know, and all of a sudden you, you're, you're, you're new, but you still got some tendencies, right? I might, I might get a new car, but I might still drive it like it's my old car. Right? But it's new. And in Christ, we are a new creation. So be new. Understand your newness. That's, that, I think, is what separates our faith, our, our, the truth of Christ from every other religion. Because everyone's about, about acting right. And, and Jesus says, let me make you brand new. And let's go to class. <laughs>